Ah, welcome to our uh, worship today, and um, we're still in normal time, Sundays after Pentecost, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, there was an option today to remember St. Luke, the evangelist, who wrote the book of Luke, the doctor, uh, but uh, we, uh, we didn't have, it, we didn't uh, Send a, they didn't send us the readings for that one, so we'll stick with our regular schedule of readings and um, for, for today. And um, we'll be using Divine Service Setting 1, so that's uh, page 151 in the Lutheran Service Book. And if you're at home, hopefully you've already figured out how to click on the link here to, uh, to get the worship folder off of our webpage. And, and, uh, with the current events and all the all the things are on there, so we'll uh, turn to hymn number seven hundred and twenty-six, evening and morning. And uh, those of you who are in person today, I invite you to stand as as you are able, as you want, to, as we uh, to begin our opening hymn. <laughs> And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our intro it this today is taken from Psalm 121. Um, <laughs> they, they only left out one verse, verse 6, but uh, so. Uh, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. In peace, let's pray to the Lord.
pray the call of the day. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated, and we'll pull out, return to our uh, children's hymn this morning. His banner over me is love, and um, didn't have a copyright on it, so I guess it's been around a little while. Uh, are you familiar with this one? His banner over me is love. So, um, we've got three verses. Uh, we'll sing. Tessa reading comes from Isaiah chapter 45. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and leave the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I'll give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord of God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though, all, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And... The epistle lesson has uh, some of those strange Greek words and names, right? So, um, I guess I could... Am I going to read it today? Well, if there's someone else wanting it. <laughs> um, oh, I, I guess I can read it. 
Yeah, Paul, Silvanus, Timothy, Thessalonians, and Macedonia, um, Achaia. Uh, so the epistle comes from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness, steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among, your, among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, though, so that you became an example of, to all believers in Macedonia and Acacia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Acacia, but your faith in God and God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we have among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we sing the Alleluia. <laughs> To him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why do you put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. And then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we sing hymn number 940, Holy God, we praise thy name.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Gospel lesson starts out with, uh, The Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And so they sent the disciple, hit their disciples with them, along with the Herodians, <laughs> asking these questions. Uh, doesn't that sound like some of the same thing that's going on in our own world today? Uh, in the Senate and in the debates for the, leading up to the elections, they ask questions but they don't really want to, they don't really care to learn anything. You know, they don't want to, they don't really care to hear the answer. They're just hoping to entangle the person in their, in their own words, right? Uh, what do you, what do you think about this issue? Well, how would you rule in this case? What about that time when, you know, <laughs> they're just hoping to get them to say something to make them look bad, right? And the Pharisees have, have listened to Jesus' last two parables, the ones that we've been reading the last two weeks. The first one about the wicked tenants in the vineyard who wouldn't pay their rent. And the last week, the wedding banquet where the invited guests refused to come. And they knew Jesus was talking about them and the other Jewish leaders, the Sadducees. And uh, so they conspired to trap him along with the Herodians. Yeah. Now, we don't hear too much about the Herodians, do we? <laughs> they don't show up as often here. Who were they? Well, we've all heard of Herod, right? So, uh, so these were his guys, right? <laughs> Poli more, more, people more interested in politics, in, in the earthly power. Uh, Herod, you know, well, Herod the Great was died after Jesus was born, but his son his, uh, was still ruling over part of the land. Underneath the Romans, the, the Herods, the family, they weren't Jewish people, they weren't Israelites at all. But they had convinced the Romans to give them the, the power, the, the kingship, the crown, uh, underneath the Romans, as long as they paid their taxes and did whatever the Romans told them to do. And so, these Herodians are, are politicians, so to speak, uh, uh, supporting the Romans and, uh, and uh, enjoying the benefits, right, of having friends in the right places. So, the question, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Well, obviously, <laughs> most taxes aren't very popular, are they? Nobody likes to pay taxes. Even those who, who think that they're, that's, uh, there should be more taxes, generally don't want to be paying more themselves. They're usually paying their own, their fair share already, right? It's always somebody else who's not paying their fair share that, uh, that needs to be paying a little bit more. But in Israel, this is an even bigger question than our own, than our own country you know, today, because who is, who is collecting the taxes? Caesar, right? He's, he's just a foreign ruler. And what have the Romans ever done for us here in Israel? What are they doing with this money that they're collecting? <laughs> uh, speak up a little louder. The centurion over there didn't hear you. Right? Um, should, should, we be, should we be paying our hard-earned money to this foreign ruler? What a, do, what does he do with it? He has wars off in other places halfway across the world. He does, he has big projects in Rome, you know, well, that doesn't help us, does it, right? So are the Pharisees then supporting Caesar and his taxes? <laughs> no, not, but they want to hold on to what little bit of power they have, right? So they go along to get along. Uh, they know the power of the, the Roman army, the Roman, uh, and, and they know what will happen if or when, a few years down the road, when the Romans do show up to, to really put down a rebellion, when uh, the city of Israel was you know, wiped out again and the temple destroyed and never rebuilt. So they go along for now, right? Uh, and the Herodians, well, 
We don't know exactly uh, how much they loved the Romans either. They probably would hope that, you know, that Herod could rule independently someday on his own, rather than being a Roman puppet. But, uh, but you know, their fortunes at this point are closely tied to the Romans. So, uh, so everyone, they ask Jesus this, this question, and they think they got him, don't they? They think they got him, because if Jesus says they should pay taxes, well, then the crowds are going to turn against him, right? And that'll end you know, whatever popular support he has at this point. But if he says that he shouldn't pay taxes, well, then they can turn him over to the Romans for actually, you know, openly starting a rebellion. And uh, they can throw him in jail and they can take care of this little, pro this little project right now before it gets any bigger. So, they, they have, uh, so they have him trapped, don't they? And you thought this sort of questioning was, brand it was only new, right? But Jesus sees through their questions like a, like a wise judge or politician better than I would if, they, if people were interrogating me like this, right? Uh, and he answers in a way that first off shows their hypocrisy, and I don't recommend calling, going around town calling people hypocrites. That's not a good way to get along with people, is it? Uh, people today, maybe they're more sensitive, uh, or, uh, or you just have to have the right relationship. I guess some, you know, uh, guys maybe do that sort of thing, right? Call each other idiots and stuff more than more than other than the ladies usually do. But uh, Jesus says, "Give to Caesar what is Caesar, and to God what is God's." And his answer leaves them speechless. Yeah, they go go away. But do they understand what he's saying? <laughs> do they? It's hard to say, is it? Martin Luther said that your God is whatever you put your trust in. It's a good way to explain it, isn't it? Whatever you look for, for good things. You can, you can see what's important in your life or somebody else's by how you invest your resources, right? Where do you spend your time, your talents, your treasures? The Herodians are spending their time, talents, and treasures in trying to keep Herod in power <laughs> and get you know, whatever benefits they can from that. Right? They look to Herod for their good. The Pharisees, well, they have their, they've kind of, they think they're following God, but they've remade him in their own idea. They're trusting in their Hebrew blood. Oh, we're sons of Abraham, right? And we're pretty good guys. You know, they're good deeds. That's what they're trusting in. That's what they're putting their, their time and their work into. Uh, you know, investing in, you know, to hoping for their salvation. Actually, you know, even though it sounds kind of strange, we don't have Herod, the family of Herod around anymore today, and there's not too many Jewish people in our own community, but we if you think a little bit about it, we can see similar people today. People who are not trusting in the living God and His Son Jesus, and their actions betray their true faith. Even if they go to church and, and appear to be good Christians, but where do they invest their time, treasures, and talents? And it's a lot less common today than it used to be in the past when the church was more of the, a center of our culture and society, right? But still today, you, if, you know, there's a famous question, what, how would you respond when you get to the pearly gates? Why should you get into heaven? There's still going to be church-going people who said, well, because I went to church and I'm a good person and I donated, right? I still hear people say stuff like that. I, can we get in on our own? Are we good people? <laughs> well, not good enough. Not by God's standards. Uh, the only reason that we can get into heaven is by trusting in Jesus has paid the price for us. He's opened the gates for us. He died for your sins and mine. We're not good people. But God does want us to, to work on it. He wants us to be good people as much as you know, we can. You know, 
keep trying harder to do better, uh, even though our good deeds will never outweigh our sin. Our, and we should donate to the church to support God's work of telling others about salvation and through His Son Jesus to bring others into this, into this faith. But the, that doesn't uh, buy our ticket into heaven. It's not a, it's not a consolation prize when you donate to the uh, charity, right? Uh, and God isn't asking us to give you know, 50% or more of our, of our money to Him, you know, right? In the Old Testament, He required the Israelites to give 10% to support the temple and, and the temple work. And the ten people could always give extra if they wanted to give thanks to God for all the good things that He did for them. Just like the, we remember the widow and her mites who were given a little bit more than 10% of what she had. So it's not a bad way to occasionally uh, check yourself, a little audit. Where are you spending your time, talents, and treasures? Are you investing in the things that you think are really important? Are you spending more time and treasures on, your, on politics than you do at church or in sports? <laughs> oh, I just got to buy one more jersey. It's only $150. It's on sale. Right? Uh, accumulating wealth. Some people spend a lot of time on their investments and reading the news. People who don't trust in God do fill their lives with all of these things. That's one reason why politics has gotten a bit crazy. <laughs> And maybe it, maybe it isn't that much different, really, than the Pharisees and the Herodians working together, but when, when God is, is more important to the center of society, He's balancing and calming influence in life. And so, as Jesus says, we should give to Caesar, render to Caesar what is Caesar. We should pay our taxes. We should vote. We should speak out for what's right and speak against what's wrong, according to God, uh, God's Word, not popular opinion, especially those things that God has clearly spoken about. Life, protecting life for both the young and the elderly. Marriage, as God, in, God instituted it. It's not our own creation that we can do whatever we want with. Justice and equality for all. And God over and over calls His people to give care to the poor and the sojourners, refugees from other lands. Don't think that one political party is God's party. Neither one is God's party. Some, both of them do some things okay and other things not so good. You can't get into heaven from being in the right political party. And again, we're, when we talk about right and wrong, we learn it from God's word, not popular opinion, not from the world around us. So, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. <laughs> when you cheat on your taxes, you're cheating on God. Because all authority, as we... Uh, a few weeks ago we heard in Romans, all authority in heaven and earth comes from God. God called Cyrus, you know, the Persian, to be the ruler uh, in, the, in his day. Give to God what is God's. Not just your offerings, and not just once a week, and I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here because I know all of you, you regularly do your prayers and devotion time at home too, but, uh, but uh, I don't know about you, you at home watching on the internet. <laughs> uh, let me know if you need a Portals of Prayer devotion book. I'll set, mail it to you. Um, but uh, in service to others as much as you can, not, not so that we can look like good people, but to give honor and glory to God, to give thanks to Him for all that He's done for us. Especially His gift of forgiveness and salvation through His Son. And when we 
And when we speak, pray that the, the Holy Spirit you, that was given to us in our baptism would guide us to speak wisely as Jesus, as Jesus did, careful not to fall into the traps that the world sets around us, right? Uh, Lord, help us. Our tongues often get away from us, don't they? But uh, we are his people. And he's in, con he's in charge. He's in control. And he has, he has uh, your tickets waiting for you at the door. You won't have to, you won't have to pass the quiz once you get there. <laughs> So, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll uh, invite you to stand and we'll sing together the offertory, which begins on page 159. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Amen. Let us pray to the Lord that we may not forget those who delivered to us the sacred deposit and taught us the faith. Let us join them in passing on the faith to those yet to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord that we may remain steadfast and immovable in faith, that we may endure to the day of his coming again. We shall be reunited with those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest from their labors to live in his eternal presence and sing his praise without end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.